Hello everyone, we're still on the section where we're talking about slopes and intercepts. And before we continue, I want to define what a linear equation is since you've had these on our previous test, you've seen these. It's an equation whose graph is a line. So if I have an equation and I make up a table of values, whatever we graph is going, is going to be a line, okay? And there are three forms of a linear equation. The first form I've written here, standard form, it's when you have a times x plus b times y equals c. And a is a coefficient, b is a coefficient, c is a constant. a and b are also constant. And here's an example of how a linear equation written in standard form looks like it'll look something like this. There's always a number in front of x, always a number in front of y, and it is equal to a constant. Also notice that x, this variable here, which is usually used as the input variable, this is always uh, in a variable with an exponent of 1. And that also tells you this will be a line when I graph it. If you see an exponent different than 1 for the x, then that means that when you graph that equation, it is not going to be a line. Another form of linear equations is slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept form looks like this. It looks like y is equal to mx plus b. And an example would be y equals 2x minus 6. Okay, this would be a linear equation written in slope-intercept form. And it's called slope-intercept form because it's easy to see the slope and the intercept. And I'll go over more of this later on. This one is called standard form, remember. And the third form of a linear equation is point-slope form. Point slope form and it looks like this. y minus y sub 1 is equal to m times x minus x sub 1. And <clears throat> as an example, you can write in point slope form like this, y minus 5 equals 3 times x minus 2. Notice in all of these examples, the x, which we usually use as the input, has an exponent of 1. Okay, and that tells you that when you graph these equations, you will get a line as your graph. Point slope form, which is this one here, it's easy to see the slope, and it's easy to see a point from that line. That's why it's called a point slope form. Today, we are going to concentrate on slope-intercept form. And then tomorrow, we will do point-slope form. Standard form, we will not do. So let's go ahead and work with slope-intercept form. Slope-intercept, the word tells you what this equation gives you. This equation will give you two types of information. It will give you what the slope is, and it will tell you what the intercept. And when we talk about intercept, we mean the y-intercept, which is where this graph crashes the y-axis. Okay, so y is equal to mx plus b. If the equation of a line is written in this form, it is very easy to graph it. Just by looking at the equation, I don't need to make any tables at all. This m right here is a constant. This m stands for slope, okay? So this m will tell you what the slope of that line is, and it's the coefficient of x. This letter b here is a constant, and this talks to you about the y-intercept. Okay, so for example, let's do an example. If I tell you to graph the line of y equal to 
3x minus 4, automatically, this is what you're going to do. You're going to say my slope is equal to 3 because that's the number in front of the x. And I'm also going to say my y-intercept happens at negative 4. And if you need to write this as a coordinate, you would write it as 0, negative 4. Okay? Let me bring this down a little bit. So I have enough information to draw this graph. m is equal to 3. y-intercept is at 0, negative 4. I can use rise and run to graph this. So let me pull up a graph here. And before we continue, I advise you to take notes in your notebook about everything that's being discussed here, OK? Um, here's a graph. Now, we had said that I'm going to write over here, just to the corner to write that equation I had written before. y is equal to 3x minus 4, OK? Now we said the slope is equal to 3 and that the y-intercept is at point 0, negative 4 because this number tells me the y-intercept. So the first step is step 1. Step 1 is plot the y-intercept. Okay, that's your first step. So let's go ahead and do that. My y-intercept is at negative 4, so let me bring this down a little bit, right here, negative 4. Here's where my line will crash the y-axis. So I have one point. How many points do I need to graph a line? At least two points. So I need one more point. Now, how do I find that second point? And this is what we do. We use the slope. The slope is 3. Now, remember slope is equal to rise over run. And this is very important. Now, if the slope is equal to 3, that means the rise is 3 and the run is 1 because that's how you get 3. 3 over 1 is 3, OK? So your step 2, step 2 is use slope to find the second point the second point, OK? So let's use our slope. Here's what we do. We start off at the y-intercept. We have a slope of 3. That means I'm going to rise 3 and run 1. And we're always going to run to the right, OK? So this is very important. Always run to the right. OK, so let's rise 3. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, and I run 1. And there's my second point. OK, so let's do that again. I start at my y-intercept, which is negative 4. The equation tells me negative 4 is your y-intercept. I rise 3 because the slope is 3, so I rise 3, 1, 2, 3, and then I run 1 that way, always to the right. I have two points. I can graph this line, OK? But you can, you can keep rising and running and rising and running if you want and get a third and a fourth and a fifth point, and your line is more precise. So once I've reached this one here that I ran one, I can go up three again. One, two, three, one. And if I had more space here, I would rise three and run one and you will have a lot a set of points and all of these points they represent the solutions of this line okay and now I can draw my line let's see here's my line there it is okay and remember to draw arrows at the ends of these lines because this means that this line will continue infinitely that way and will continue infinitely down this way, OK? So there you have it. If I give you an equation that's written in slope 
intercept form, it's very easy to draw the line. Now I will give you another example. Let me erase all of this so I can give you another example. For our next example, let's say they ask you to graph the line of y is equal to negative 2 x plus 4. Okay? The first thing you have to notice is that this equation is written in sloped intercept form. Remember that the slope intercept form looks like this y is equal to mx plus b. So this equation is written in this form. And what that does is it's very easy for me to see what the slope is and to see what the y intercept is. So let's look for that. By looking at this, the number in front of the x is my slope. So I know the slope is negative 2. And the y intercept is positive 4. So the y intercept happens at 4. And I can write it in I can write it as a coordinate, right? 0, 4. Because that's what this number means. Um, this doesn't go together. Don't be confused by this. Let me just erase this 4 in front here. My y-intercept is at 0, 4. Okay? So what what is my first step? My first step is plot y-intercept. That's my first step. So let's do that. Y-intercept, you said, is at 0, 4. Here it is, right here. That's where this graph will crash the y-axis. And now the second step is, who remembers? Second step is, here's the second step. You use slope to find the second point. Okay, the second point on this graph so I can draw a line. Remember, you just need two points to graph a line. Okay, so here's my slope. Slope is negative 2. Now be careful here. This is important. Slope is negative 2. This is very important. When the slope is positive, we rise and we run to the right. But when the slope is negative, instead of rising, we are going to fall. Okay, so instead of going up, we are going to count down from the y-intercept. And we always run to the right. Okay? So let's do that. Here's my y-intercept. Since the slope is negative 2, I am going to fall 2. So here's me falling to 1, 2. And then we're going to run 1. And here's my second point. And I can do that forever. I can, you can stop right here and draw your line. But I just want to show you, you can go on forever. You can go down 2 more, 1, 2 and run one. And here's a third point. And you can go down two more and run one. And there's your th fourth point, etc., etc. And notice notice these points will are all part of that line. Okay? So let's draw our line. There's the line. Okay? And remember that this line should have arrows. Notice how this slope is negative. Right? We talked about when we walk from left to right and the line falls or decreases, that means its slope is negative. Okay? Now I want to give you an example for you to try using um, graph paper in your notebook. I want you to try these two problems on your own. I want you to graph, graph the line graph the line of these two equations. I want you to do y is equal to 2x plus 2 and y is equal to negative 3x minus 4. Okay? 
negative 3x minus 4. So I've given you one of the I've given you one with a positive slope and I've given you one with a negative slope. I want you to try these on your own. Hit pause, draw these in your notebook, and then come back to see the results for these two equations. Okay, so hit pause, work on it, and then look at the answers. Okay, here are the answers to the two practice problems you did on your own. The blue line is negative 3x minus 4. Notice how this slope is negative. Notice where the y-intercept is, right here at negative 4. Okay, and then for the red one, y is equal to 2x plus 2. Notice how the y-intercept is at 2 and your slope is positive 2. You can go up 1, 2, and run 1, okay? There is the answer. Now, I do want to show you one more example where, let's do it right here. Let's say I give you a graph. I, I tell you to graph this. y is equal to 2 thirds x plus 1. Okay, um, notice it's written in slope-intercept form because it's written in this form, mx plus b. m, again, is your slope. In this case, m is equal to 2 over 3. So I know my rise is equal to 2. Remember, that slope is rise over run. So your rise is 2 and your run is 3. And your y-intercept is located at 0, 1 because this is your y-intercept here. So when you try and graph this, we look for the y-intercept which is right here at 1, 0, 1, and then we rise 2 and run 3. So let's rise to 1, 2, and then we run 3, 1, 2, 3. And there would be my second point. And I can go up 2 more and run 3 more okay and then you can draw your line I just wanted to mention that because sometimes this is not a very straight line right let's see if I can there sometimes your slope will have a run that's different than one okay in the previous examples all of these have a run of one because it's a whole number okay so I just wanted to mention whenever you have a fraction in front then the top number that represents your rise and the bottom number will represent how much you're going to run. So there you have it. I hope you understood this and you will have classwork on this. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.